Good day. I am Mum Bing. Welcome to my general mathematics class. Good day to all of you. So this is now week three of our general mathematics subject. So we have now rational functions and this is actually a continuation of the lesson last week. For the content standards, the learner demonstrates understanding of key concepts of rational functions. And for the for performance standards, the learner is able to accurately formulate and solve real-life problems involving rational functions. For the most essential learning competency, or the MILKS, we have the learner determines the intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes of a rational function. So let's have lesson one, and that is intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes of rational functions. Let us recall first. Which of the following is an example of rational functions? Among the three examples are given, which do you think is an example of rational function? Okay, you are right. And the correct answer is number one. So we have f of x is equal to 3x three, three squared plus 1 divided by x minus 1. From the definition of rational function, it is a function in the form of f of x equal to p of x over q of x, wherein p of x and q of x are polynomial functions, and q of x should not be equal to 0 because uh, it will make our uh, function undefined if the denominator is equal to 0. Okay, this time, we're going to find for the domain and range of the following functions. So, let's have f of x is equal to x over x plus 3. And the domain of this function is negative infinity to negative 3, union of negative 3 to positive infinity. And the range is negative infinity to 1, union of 1 to positive infinity. Example number two, so we have the function of f of x is equal to 3 over x minus 4. So the domain is negative infinity to 4, union of 4 to positive infinity. And then the range is negative infinity to 0, union of 0 to positive infinity. Then we have the function of g of x is equal to x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. So the domain is uh, negative infinity to negative 1, union of negative 1 to positive 1, union of positive 1 to positive infinity. And then the range is negative infinity to 0, union of 0 to positive infinity. Now, let's have this activity, I connect more. We are going to connect the given statement or the phrase in column A with the answer in column B. So, this is column A and this is column B. So, let's answer the following. So, number one, this the intercept of a graph of a rational function is actually the points of intersection of its graph and an axis. Now, to find the x-intercept of a function, the answer is we let y equal to 0. Then, number 3, the zeros of the function is also okay, the x-intercept of the function. And then, to find the y-intercept of a function, we are going to let x equal to 0. Then, the function of the f of x is equal to g of x over h of x, where g of x and h of x are polynomial, is actually the definition of 
rational function. Now let's proceed with intercepts and zeros of rational function. But let us define first what are intercepts. So the intercepts of the graph of a rational function are the points of the inter intersection of its graphs and an axis. The y-intercept of the graph of a rational function r of x, if it exists, occurs at r of 0, provided that r of x is defined at x is equal to 0. To find y-intercept, simply evaluate the function at x is equal to 0. To find for the x-intercept of the graph of a rational function, r of x, if it exists, occurs at the zeros of the numerators that are not zeros of the denominators. To find the x-intercept, we equate the function to 0. And then the zeros of a function are the values of x which make the function 0. The numbered zeros are also x-intercepts of the graph of the function. Okay, now, this is the graph wherein you can find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and the zero of the function. So, you will notice that the y-intercept is located along y-axis, meaning x is equal to zero. And then the x-intercept is located in the x-axis, so y naman is equal to zero. And this graph is obtained using the GeoGebra. Now let's have the example. So find the x and y intercepts of the following rational functions. To find the x intercept, equate the function to 0. So we have the function of f of x is equal to 3 minus x over x plus 1. So equate the function to 0. So we now have 0 is equal to 3 minus x divided by x plus 1. Then, by symmetric property of equality, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 1. So we will come up with 3 minus x is equal to 0. Then, by addition property of equality, we have 3 plus negative 3 minus x is equal to 0 plus negative 3. So we are going to cancel this 3. So we now have negative 3 is equal to negative 3. Now to eliminate the negative sign, we are going to multiply by uh, both sides of the equation by negative 1. So we have now x is equal to 3. So the x-intercept is at 3 and 0. Now, by analyzing the example, we can say that to find the x-intercept, we simply equate the numerator of the function to 0. So, we have the numerator 3 minus x, so equal to 0. Then, solve for the value of x. So, we have x is equal to 3. Therefore, the x-intercept is at 3 and 0. Now, to find the y-intercept, change the x value of the function to 0. So we have now f of 0 is equal to 3 minus 0 since we are going to substitute 0 to all the x value. So we have 0 plus 1 and then simplify the fraction. So we have 3 minus 0 over 0 plus 1. So we have 3 over 1. So, f of x is equal to 3 and that is all the value of f of x or y. So, the y-intercept is at 0 and 3. Okay, so this is an, another example. So, we have the function f of x is equal to 3x divided by x plus 3. The first thing we have to do is to equate the numerator to Zero. So we have 0 is equal to 3x. By symmetric property of equality, 
we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by one third or we're going to divide both sides of the equation by three. Then the answer now is x is equal to zero. So the x-intercept is zero or at zero and zero. Now to find the y-intercept, we're going to change the x value of the function to zero. So we have now f of zero is equal to three multiplied by zero divided by zero plus three. So we have f of zero is equal to zero divided by three to simplify the fraction. So we have now f of x is equal to zero. That is the value of f of x or y. So the y-intercept is zero or it is at zero and zero. Now, another example is the function of f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 4. So we are going to equate the numerator to 0. So But before that, we are going to factor the numerator. So um, the factor is x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 1. And then, uh, solve for x. So, unahin natin si x minus 2. So, we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. Then, x is equal to 2. And then, x minus 1 is equal to 0. x is equal to 1. So, we have now two x intercepts. So, we have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. But, by looking at the denominator of the original function, if we substitute 2 to the x or to the value of x, we will have a zero denominator and it will, uh, the function will become meaningless or undefined. So we will only accept, accept x intercept at x is equal to 1 or 1 and 0. Now for the y intercept, we are going to change the x value of the function to 0. So we have f of 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 2 divided by 0 squared minus 4. Then we are going to simplify the fraction. So we have f of 0 is equal to negative 2 over 4. So we are going to reduce to lowest term. So f of x is equal to negative 1 half and that is the value of f of x or y. Therefore, the y-intercept is negative 1 half or it is at 0 and negative 1 half. Okay, now for the zeros of the, the rational function, we are going to uh, equate the function to zero or solve for the x-intercept of the function by equating the numerator to zero. Example one. So we have the function of g of x is equal to x minus two divided by x plus six. So let's equate the numerator to zero. So we have x minus two equal to zero. So we have x is equal to two. Therefore, the zero of g of x is 2. Now, for example number 2, we have the function of h of x is equal to x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. So, we simplify by factoring the denominator. So, we are going to simplify the function by factoring the denominator. So, we have now... The function of h of x is equal to x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 3. So we are going to remove now the common factors, which is x minus 3. So we have now is 1 over x plus 3 equal to 0. Then equate the numerator to 0. So we have 1 is equal to 0, but that is a false statement. Since 1 is not equal to 0, therefore, there is no 0 of the function, which means that no point on the graph touches the x-axis. 
for example number three so we have g of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 4. So we simplify the function by factoring both the numerator and the denominator. So we have now g of x is equal to x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 1 divided by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. Then we are going to remove the common factor. So, the common factor here is x plus 2. So, we have now a function of g of x is equal to x minus 1 divided by x minus 2. Then, we are going to equate the numerator to 0. So, we have the numerator x minus 1 equal to 0. So, x is equal to 1. So, the 0 of g of x is 1. Okay, that will be the last example of this particular topic. Thank you and God bless.